Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is uh, nine o'clock on a Sunday. It's time for a review show special. Now, this is where I take a uh, deep dive into a particular trick or a particular company, and I have a look at all of the stuff that they've bought out, and I talk about whether it's any good or not. And today, I'm going to be doing a review show special on a company that I've been asked to do a review show special on for a long time now, and uh, I finally got around to it. This is a review show special on some of the latest stuff that has been bought out by TCC. Now, TCC in the last few years have really risen to prominence, and their name really kind of brings forth the feeling of quality a lot of the time. A lot of magicians use a lot of their stuff, a lot of their tricks, their gimmicks, and they seem to bring out everything from close-up pads to bags to sponge balls to coins to intricate gimmicks to wooden boxes to electronic devices and then some. I mean, it's just in Incredible. And then obviously at Blackpool, uh, they bought out a bunch of stuff with David Penn. They're going and, and bringing more and more stuff out by the minute. Ryland is currently messing around with their Indian cups and balls and playing around with those. So much stuff coming out. Well, today we're going to be having a look at some of the latest TCC items. I'm going to be talking about what I think about them, whether they're any good or not, and uh, and giving you my honest opinion. So, without further ado, we're going to get straight into it. If you're a fan of TCC and you want to know what their latest stuff is like, do not change that channel. It's not really a channel, but don't go away. Uh, we're going to get into it right now. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is Paddle King by TCC Magic. And you can get all of these directly from TCC at tccmagic.com. Or you can go ahead and uh, get them from all good magic dealers. So what is Paddle King? Well, Paddle King is the old uh, money paddle. I mean, I've seen this has been around since time began. Um, it's the old money paddle. Now, if you don't know what the money paddle is, I'm going to do a performance of this in a minute for you. But there are several advantages to this version over the original version. I'm going to go through those advantages as well. But first of all, before we get into any of that, let's do a performance of exactly what this trick is, what it does, and if it's any good. Let's have a look at a performance. I'm good. I have here a little wooden stick. Very now, this cool. looks like uh, nothing on God's green earth, to be perfectly honest. But what I have here is the greatest thing that magicians have ever designed. That's a bomb we're pretty stack, creative. <laughs> we're, we're pretty creative breed. We can come up with some amazing stuff. But this is next level. This is a magic duplication device. This is why magicians never need to make money, because we can duplicate our money. Now, you'll notice that the wooden stick has three elastic bands around it. We have a yellow one, we have a black one, and we have a red one. Anything that you put underneath there will duplicate. Nice. Let me show you what I mean. If I take a 10 pence, we'll start small and we'll work our way up. If we start small, just like that, and we put the 10 pence underneath the elastic band, all I have to do is snap my fingers and then what happens is we get two 10 pences. It's absolutely crazy. When I say we've got two 10 pences, we Ooh. actually got two 10 pences. You can duplicate that money using this little stick. Now, let's say I wanted to do the same thing with uh, with another 10 pence. I'd just put it underneath there. I'd snap my fingers. The snap is the second the magic happens. Because you see, now we've got two 10 pences. We've got a 10 pence on top. We've got a 10 pence underneath. Just let me take them out there. That's two 10 pences. Can you see how useful this is? Imagine you were running for a bus and you needed to get on the bus and you were like 40 pence short. All you'd have to do is annoy the passengers that are waiting to go on the bus. Well, again, okay, one second, Mr. Driver. Let me just take my little stick out. I'm just going to stick things underneath the elastic bands. I'm just, you'd need to take about five minutes to do it. But I mean, it's, it's an amazing invention. It's the sort of thing that only a magician could come up with. If I do it with the yellow one, it gets exactly the same thing. Now I've got two 10 pences right there underneath the yellow band, right? I could keep doing this over and over again. In fact, I could keep doing it, Jack, until you like it. Now, here's the thing. It's money, you know, I do like it. Well, yeah, but the problem <laughs> is, it's like I said, I took the mick a bit, but I mean, this would take forever to make a decent amount of money, right? Yeah. Um, so if you want big money, you can get big money. Would you like to see how to get big money? I love big money. Look, all I have to do is do this, and I get big money. Where? Oh, you can't see it until I, uh, I, until I do this. And now I've got big money. You see, this, my friend, uh, is big money. Now I've got a £10 on this side. I've got a £10 on this side. That's £20. That's very, very exciting, right? It's very. It's very exciting because I've got all of this money. Now, the problem is, if I do this, 
it disappears and I'm left with absolutely nothing. But if I want money to appear just on one side, I can make the £10 appear on that side, nothing on the other side. Let me take that £10 away and I will break every single rule in magic and I will teach you how this trick works. Would you like to know how it works, Jack? Free money, yeah. No, well, I've got to be honest with you, I'm lying. It's not really an invention. You can't really make money from it. It's a magic trick, Jack. That's how it works. Aww. It's a magic trick. It all works with mirrors. That's how it works. What mirror? Do you see the mirror there? No. Do you see the mirror on the other side? No. You don't see the mirror? I don't see a mirror. You really don't see the mirror? Why do you, you see the mirror? You've got you to you you look carefully and you might see the uh, the mirror there, there's a mirror there and there's a mirror. That's how it works, you see. It's all to do with mirrors. That's mirror number one and that's mirror number two. That's how it works. It's all to do with mirrors. But have you ever seen that trick that I do where I make coins jump from one place to another? Yeah. Yeah, watch this. Watch, watch the mirror. Do you want the top mirror or the bottom mirror to jump? The top. That one right there. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, one, two... Three. There you go. Just like that. I left the bottom one there. The top one jumped over there. Let me put that back. You can have a look at that. You can examine everything, Jack. That is called Paddle King. So there you go, that's the money paddle. And that's one of the routines on the tutorial. The tutorial, which is hosted on Vimeo, is a really good tutorial. Once again, look, I'm not going to say this over and over again. TCC don't really include any live performances. They do have performances to camera, but they don't do any live performances. I think this is a mistake. I think they should have live performances. I've mentioned this over and over again. I don't understand when you're spending so much money on a product, when you're spending so much money on a tutorial and you're putting all of this time and effort into it, why you wouldn't have a live performance. They've chosen not to. That's fine. At least they've got a studio performance. Uh, so they have a studio performance of, uh, of this and uh, they go through lots of different ways of using it, lots of different handlings. They've actually got three particular routines on this. Now, the first routine is basically the routine I showed you, slightly different, but basically the routine that I showed you, um, which is what I knew from years ago as the money panel. Uh, they've also got a, uh, a another routine with just the mirror, which you can follow on from the money paddle with and do that routine where the, uh, where the mirror uh, jumps on and off the paddle. That's quite cool. And then the, the paddle can be set up so that the, there's actually a mirror on both sides. And then they teach what has commonly become known as turbo stick by Richard Sanders, um, which has been around since time began. Richard's Wonderful idea uh, from Leo uh, Semesters was to have a mini sort of um, whiteboard that you drew X's on and the X's jumped all over the place. Um, Michael J. Fitch did it with a, a cricket bat a couple of years ago and uh, he produced a little mini cricket ball. Uh, you can do that same thing with this because the mirror can be drawn on with a whiteboard marker. Now, what you're going to get with this is you're going to get a, uh, a little case. And the case is really nice because uh, it keeps everything in place. Uh, you get some spare bands because obviously on this thing, uh, you're going to, uh, there we go. On this thing, you're gonna be wrapping elastic bands around and on, over time they will break. So uh, you get a place to put the spare elastic bands. As you can see, I have also found that this is a perfect place to put some coins as well uh, because the routine I showed you, you need to bring out three regular coins. You can borrow them. But these days, I don't know about you, I find it very difficult to borrow coins off spectators. Uh, and then you get your extra mirror. Now that's one of the things that's nice about this. Let's just uh, make that money appear. Oh my God, look, I've made coins and I've made notes appear. How amazing is that? It's almost like I can do real magic. Um, so when you um, <clears throat> when you take this off here, and I will show you this, uh, da, 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 there we go. Um, this mirror here is permanently affixed into place. This isn't, but you get this extra mirror, uh, which has a velvet backing, which is really nice uh, because it doesn't make any noise. Uh, but then this velvet backed mirror uh, magnetically locks into here. And once it's in here, uh, it's examinable and you could use it as the finale uh, to uh, the money routine. Absolutely. Uh, there's also another routine that uses this principle. But if you just bring out the paddle like this and you show it and you have it examined, you can take a whiteboard marker and you can go into that turbo stick style routine. But instead of a whiteboard, you're using a mirror. Um, 
it's debatable as to what looks more organic. I don't think either one of them look organic, but again, I don't think that's a problem. I think when you're going out and you're doing magic and you're telling people you're a magician, pulling out a weird and wonderful object like this isn't the biggest problem in the world. Now, the actual stick itself is made really well. Uh, it's going to last a long time. It paddles really nicely. It's, it's got a really good weight to it. I do a lot of routines with a paddle. This paddles really, really nicely. The routine that I showed you, I was a little bit concerned that uh, a English note would not work, uh, but it does fine. It's just uh, I had to work out a way to fold it to make it work. Um, <clears throat> but that only took a few seconds. And the reset is no time at all. You literally, and you can do this openly in front of the audience when you've finished, uh, when you've finished the performance, you can just put the uh, money back onto this thing here, like that. And you can almost openly reset it in front of the audience because, uh, you know, that it's you're not apparently doing anything dodgy here, are you? Um, so you could openly put it back on there in front of the audience. Um, yeah, and that's what it is. You got three routines, very well explained by the guys from TCC. They go through everything with a fine tooth comb. If you've never paddled anything before, and by the way, if you've never paddled anything before and you're a magician, have a quiet word with yourself. Uh, but if you've never paddled anything before, this is uh, you will learn in seconds how to do the paddle move. They go through a couple of really nice changes as well. Uh, it's a very in-depth tutorial. Uh, but then you get everything that you need to perform some really nice routines. It's a commercial trick. It packs... Uh, flat. It literally will just go in there and go into your pocket. It plays big. Uh, there's not really any angle considerations. There's multiple moments of magic that are all really visual. Depending on the routine, it will reset immediately. So, for example, the one with the X's on the mirror, you just rub the X's off and you're ready to go again. You could routine all three routines together into one if you wanted to, or you can just do whichever routine you prefer the best. Um, it's really great. I love this. The only real negative for me is that there's no live performance. Um, but I, I know that there's going to be people watching this review and they're going to say, Craig, you're mad. You, you know, who would carry around this to a gig? Well, I would. Uh, I've got no problem carrying this around to a gig at all. Um, I don't think it looks bad in any way, shape or form. In fact, I actually think it looks, uh, Intriguing, which I think is really important when you're doing close-up magic. I've used a uh, turbo stick for years and never had a problem with the turbo stick. I think that uh, this would work really well as well. Um, and, you know, if I'm ever in a situation where I can borrow money, uh, it's even more of a hook because you can borrow the money and, uh, and, and, and duplicate it. But, uh, yeah, it's great. I love it. I'm going to give it 96%. I'm definitely going to do it. I'm also not going to show it Ryan because if I do, he'll steal it. Um, so uh, he can keep his sticky fingers off this. Uh, but it's 96%. Uh, like I say, you can put it back inside here and it packs nice and small and you can throw it in your case and you're good to go at a moment's notice. It's called Paddle King. It's really good. Now let's look at the next TCC review. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to be looking at here, the next uh, routine is... Uh, mental mental key prediction by Conan Lau and Royce Liu. Uh, again by TCC. So what is this? Well, this is basically a uh, a key fob. This is the key fob, and it comes complete uh, with everything that you need. It comes complete with this. It's a little key fob that you can hang on your keys. So in that respect, it's a little bit of an EDC item. You can even you even get a key um, to hang on there, although the key doesn't really do anything. It's not part of the trick at all, so you don't really need the key. So you might as well put a key master on there instead. <laughs> uh, but you don't really need the key. But you get this. This is the key fob. Uh, you also get uh, the gimmicks that you need, and finally you get this uh, this little pad. Now, what's the effect? Well, the effect is uh, it's kind of a prediction thing. Uh, <clears throat> what happens is that um, you it's it's a little bit like Kranz medallion basically is what we're is what we're going for here. It's a little bit like Kranz medallion in that um, there we go in that somebody will uh, give you a four digit number and uh, you give them a key at the very very beginning. Somebody gives you a four digit number and then you take the key back uh, and you say that's room key. 
and it's got a key fob on it and that uh, tells you what the room number is. And when they look at the room number, it matches the number that they gave you. And so what you're doing here is you're giving them the key at the beginning, you're taking the pad and you're taking four numbers and you're writing four numbers down and, uh, and, and you're writing them on the pad. So you can get four different people to give you a number. So you end up with a random four digit number. You then show them the four digit number. You take the pad back and you show that, uh, so you take the key back and then you have them look at the key fob and the key fob um, matches the, uh, the number. Uh, that's, that's it in essence. Now, it's a very clever method. It's similar in many ways to the methodology behind Quran Medallion. Um, so the, the, the methodology is very, very similar. Um, however, um, it's made completely differently. Uh, it's very well made, as you would expect from TCC, it's very well made. Um, there's no live performance, but the tutorial goes through everything and, and goes through everything really well. So by the time you finish watching it, you'll know exactly what you need to do. Um, my issue with it is that uh, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a recess. It's examinable at the end for sure. So at the end, they can look at that key fob and they can examine it and, and, and they won't really see anything. Um, but it's going to be a couple of minutes reset. It's not the sort of thing that you could do in a busy environment where you've got to go from table to table to table. This is more of a, a restaurant table hoppers trip or maybe a, uh, you know, a parlor show or something like that. That's where uh, this would work best. And it's, it's nice. It's not. It didn't blow me away. It didn't blow me away, in all honesty. Uh, I think the original um, Quran medallion is better than this. Um, I think that the wallet that we reviewed a few months ago um, with the lottery uh, two-digit number in the wallet, um, the, it, it, there was a scratch card in a wallet by Gerald Kirby, I think it is. Oh, I can't remember the name of the trick. Scratch, I think it might be. Uh, but that, I think, was more impossible than this and hid the method better because I th the method is very similar with this as it is with um, that particular routine. That original route, not the original, but that routine, I think it's scratch, that routine where scratch card is, is um, you know, you have a wallet and you say you've got a prediction in there and they give you a two digit number and you take the scratch card out and, and it matches the two digit number. I think that's, um, a better presentation because of the scratch card and not only a better presentation but I think the method hides it better because the fact it's on a scratch card the methodology is similar in a way to this as it is to uh, uh, to that scratch effect but I think I think that's better so there's nothing wrong with this I think that if you yeah I mean I, look let's have a look at a performance of it I'm not going to go any further but let's have a look at performance of it so you can see exactly what this is going to be. Um, and I've got something interesting here. What I have here is a very old key. Now, this key is attached to a very old key fob. Is this the key to the office safe? No, it's really not. Um, Sarah would never let me have that. <laughs> what, what this is, is, you know, I travel around the world quite a lot with my job and I'm always staying in hotels. Like, I'm always away, staying in a hotel one place or another. Pretty much. Generally these days, 99% out of 100, whenever you go to a hotel, they have those credit card things now where you just swipe them yeah. uh, and, and it lets you in. Although, what's really annoying, I don't know if you've ever had this, Jack, you'll go to a hotel, you're on like the sixth floor and a five mile walk to get to your hotel room. And then when you get there, after being out all day on a shoot, you come back in and the card stops working and you have to trade your ass down to reception again for them to activate the key. Nothing to do with the trick, it just annoys me. I've had that uh, happen as well. Yeah, it's really annoying. <laughs> but 99% um, of the time, that's, that's what keys are these days back in the olden days um you used to use um uh, they used to use keys like this now this is a true story myself and nemed were doing some gigs in leeds a few years ago uh, this is genuinely a true story so we're doing some gigs in leeds a few years ago and uh, sarah always books the accommodation when we're away performing and we were doing a series of cabaret shows right mm -hmm. and so we we're in leeds for about four days and she always books terrible accommodation but i mean occasionally it's okay this time she outdid herself with possibly the worst accommodation i've ever stayed in my life first of all it was in it was in the center of leeds it was a crack den i'm pretty sure it was a crack den like you know when you're in trouble when you're asking directions to this hotel and they're going 
You're staying there, are you? You know that you're in trouble, genuinely. And then me and them would walk in and, uh, <laughs> you know, like you normally have a check-in desk. Yeah. We had to sign, genuinely, this is true. We had to sign to say we didn't have any drugs. Like, this is... <laughs> no, we're not bringing crack into your crack den. Like, genuinely, this was the scariest mm -hmm. place. We were out performing all day because we were doing, like, workshops and stuff. Yeah. And when we got back in the evening after the first night, bearing in mind we were staying in this twin room, um, which was like probably the size of Harry Potter's bedroom when he was under the stairs. Oh, Jesus um, and there were both of us in there. And we'd left our suitcases in there. We'd just gone out and performed. And um, when we got back, and this is a true story, um, start on it. the bed, no, no, but the, the room was wide open. Oh, no. Our, 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 our suitcases were open. Nobody had taken anything. But on Nemed's bed, <laughs> this is a true story. On Lemmy's bed with three dirty kids' pants. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I've never seen him so annoyed. Oh, this poor Nemmy. This is Nemmy. He's like, what has your wife booked us? Anyway, the, the reason I'm telling you that is because this place actually used um, these old-fashioned style keys. Um, and, and these keys were uh, what we used to open. They didn't have anything they didn't have hygiene to be honest but they didn't have they, they didn't have those kids um anyway i'm telling you this because we're going to try and do something i'm going to leave that right there i'm going to put it over there so i can't reach it look it's out of my reach there you go and um i have here a pad and the reason is uh, we're going to create a four digit number okay so we're going to create a four digit number now the first digit i'm going to snap my fingers and when I do, I'd like you to give me a single digit. Can you do that for me? Yep. I'm going to snap my fingers. Three. Are you sure? Yep. You want to change your mind? I like three. Okay, you like three. Okay, interesting. Uh, uh, and what I want you to do is when I snap my fingers, I want you to name a different number. Okay? So this is going to be the second digit of our four-digit number. Ideally, I'd like each digit to be different, but don't let that put you off. If you'd like to say the same digit four times, that's fine. But I would like each digit to be different if I could. Okay. So when I snap my fingers, name another digit. Do that right now. Eight. Okay. Are you sure? Yep. Okay, so three, eight. Now, I'm going to do this again with the third digit, and then I'm going to ask you a question. So I'm going to snap my fingers, and when I do, go for another digit. Zero. Okay, so let me ask you a question here and be completely honest. Have I been able to influence you at any point? Other than saying I want each digit to be different, but even then I said that you didn't have to if you didn't want to. Have I influenced you? Do you feel like each one of these digits was a free choice? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So we've got 380. You have one final choice. When I snap my fingers, I'm going uh, to have you set name one more digit. Seven. Okay. Now, before I do anything, are you sure you want seven? Like you can change your mind if you want to. I don't want you saying later on, Craig made me pick seven. He's a cheating little sausage and he made me pick. If you want seven, that's fine, but it's a totally free choice. I'll go with seven. Are you sure? Yeah. Final answer? Final answer. Ask the audience. Phone a friend. 50 50. What do you think, Mike? Seven. Go for it. Seven. Okay. Ask the audience. Can you, uh, let's just recap. You can recap. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a pun. I'm so funny. Um, let's just recap. This is the number that you ended up with. And you could have ended up with a completely different number. If you'd have made different choices, it would have been a completely different number. And do you remember this key and this key fob was out of your reach the entire time, right? Yeah. I want you to hold your hand out for me. Because I'm going to give you this key fob. Because here's the interesting thing. I'm just going to put it right there. Here's the interesting thing. I didn't show you the other side of the key fob, did I? No. And there's a reason I didn't show you the other side of the key fob. And the reason is, what I have on here is the room number to the room that I stayed in. And it's never knew I had this key, he'd freak out. Like, he still has cold sweats and nightmares about that staying in that hotel to this day. Well, I say hotel. That's, that's doing it. Anyway. <laughs> that crack den. He still, has, uh, he still has dreams about, nightmares about that right now. Um, but there was a room number, obviously, and, and the room number is on the other side of that key fob, and you went 3807, and that was your choice. What's crazy is if you turn that over and have a look at what the room number was, you'll Whoa. see it was 3807. So that's a performance. Look, here's the thing at the end of the day.
if you like that performance and you want to do that trick and you understand that there is going to be a bit of a reset at the end of it, then by all means get it. Um, the one thing to bear in mind is you are going to need refills. There are, you are supplied with an absolute metric ton of stuff that you need in order to be able to do it. You're not going to need any refills anytime soon. I, I predict that even a busy working pro that puts this into their act and makes it a key part of their act, I still think this will probably last a couple of years without needing any sort of, uh, any sort of refill. At some point, you are going to need a refill at some point down the line. But I'm sure TCC have you covered when it comes to that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you saw the performance. If you like what you saw, that's a clear representation of what you get in this trick. Um, it's classic mentalism techniques with really well-made props in order to achieve a very nice prediction. Um, I just think that there's better ways of doing this. The scratch effect is one example. The architect of predictions is another example uh, where you've got a photo of the key on your phone from the very beginning. Um, and also, I don't think... I mean, do you know many hotel rooms that use a key like this anymore? No, I don't. I stay in a lot of hotels and I can't think of a single hotel I've stayed in any time recently where they use a key like this. Now, you could build that into the story if you want to and you could talk about how you stayed in a really old B&B &B recently and they gave you a key and, and, and this is the key. You asked them to take it or some... I don't know. There's probably a way to justify it through the use of presentation. Um, but, you know, I think that that's something to bear in mind as well. I don't know. I'm not in love with this. I think it's okay. I'm going to give it 69%. It's not something that I would do. Uh, it's not something that's going to go into my act. But I can't criticise it too much because it's very well made. Uh, it works like it's meant to do. The tutorial's really good. And it, it, it's, a, it's a method that works. So there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't think it's very exciting. Um, so, I don't know. 69%. 60%. Okay, so next up we have the Barallel Vase by Jimmy Fan and Ar Artisan Coin. Uh, Jimmy Fan and Artisan Coin. Uh, so, uh, what is this? Well, Artisan Coins is by TCC and it's a fresh approach to coin gaffs. So they've been releasing versions of the coin gaffs that... Uh, uh, classic coin gaffs, and uh, some of them have actually been really quite nice. So what is the Barallel Vase? Well, on the surface, it looks, doesn't it, just like a ball and vase. Doesn't that look like a ball and vase? It does, doesn't it? Don't, it looks just like a ball and vase. That's what it looks like on the surface. In reality, there is a lot more to this than just a typical ball and vase. This is one of the most exciting tricks that I've seen for a long time. And I love the ball and vase. I've done videos on the ball and vase, uh, you know, recently on this channel. And there's, there's so many really uh, wonderful ball and vase routines. This is, this, is, this is great. Like this is absolutely uh, amazing. It really is. There's so much built into this. I'm going to show you a performance of it. So I'm going to do a performance of this so you can see exactly what it looks like. And then when I've done the performance, I'll, uh, I'll talk about why I like this so much. Because, spoiler, I really do like this. I've got uh, this. This is a very, very, very cool trick. Um, this is a prop from hundreds of years ago. Ooh. And it was designed for coins. Um, but I'm going to be using a ball. But it, it is designed for coins, but I couldn't find the coins that you need to be able to do this with. So I'm going to use a ball. And you'll see that inside here, there's actually a ball. Now, it's a little, well, hold your hand out for me. Uh, it's a little, uh, like, tennis ball. You can, well, a little sort of baseball, little red baseball. Nice. Uh, is it okay, yeah? That's real. Good stuff. So the lid goes on. Now, this is the idea. I'm going to tell you, you don't, don't squeeze my ball. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do before I do it. I have to try and get the ball back inside the vase where it belongs. But I can't just lift up the lid and put it in there. That's not magic. I have to use magic. Now, all I have to do is concentrate, rotate my hand down like that, squeeze, and when I do, the ball vanishes. Mm -hmm. 
And the reason the ball vanishes is because it does exactly what I said it would do. It would go back inside there. Oh. Or maybe you missed it. You know, there's a rule in magic, never repeat a trick. So I'm going to do it again for you, okay? But this time you know exactly what's going to happen. You know I'm going to get that ball into that vase. It happens when I just turn my hand over and I do this and the ball vanishes and it goes right there inside the vase. Huh? And that's kind of weird, right? It's very weird. Now here's the thing. You can see it's there. There's no ambiguity. I'm going to leave it in there. But if I take a piece of nothing, put it into my hand, rub the back of my hand, snap my fingers, that's when the ball goes back into my uh, into my uh, into my hand. But if I put the ball in my pocket, I can snap my fingers and have it go back into the vase. Like I can keep doing this over and over again. And you look very confused, and I can understand why it's a very confusing trick. I totally get that. Would you like me to make everything clear for you, please? Making everything clear would look like that. But uh, lift your hand. Because now I have made everything crystal clear, which is a kind of a weird thing, right? But there's a rule in magic. Just when you've kicked him in the head, you want to kind of go one more time. And I did say this was a coin trick. And I did say that I couldn't find the coins. I kind of lied because if I snap my fingers one more time, now inside there we have, hold your hand out, one, two, three, four American half dollars. And that's a trick with a vase some coins, and a little see-through ball. That's brilliant. So that's a performance of the Barallel Vars, and uh, hopefully you can see what's so nice about this. So first of all, for anybody who knows, first of all, this is really well made. Like, I'm talking really well made. The, the wood is beautiful. Uh, the whole thing screams quality. Like, this is the sort of thing that you could see in the Magic Circle Museum sitting on one of the shelves. This is... This is just beautiful, it really is. That's the first thing that you need to know. This is exceptional quality. The next thing that you need to know is that this has the traditional ball and vase gimmick built into it, absolutely. And I'm gonna go through what some of the things are that you can do with this, because I think it's important to know because of what you're getting with this. So first of all, the lid you can show is perfectly normal because there's so many locking principles in place here. The vase you can show is perfectly normal. At this point, you could have all of this examined if you want to. You could have the vase examined, you could have the lid examined, you could have the ball examined. Um, you're then able to do, at any point that you want to, the traditional uh, ball and vase. So you can, you can go into this where you can show the traditional uh, ball and vase. And for everybody who knows the traditional ball and vase, you know what's going on here, right? So you can do that, but anytime you want to, you can go back into that main section and lock everything together, which is great. So in the previous routine that you saw, um, I, I was able to load the clear ball in at the very, very beginning. And so that was loaded in. Think about that. The final load was loaded at the very beginning of the routine. The routine behind this is brilliant. So that's loaded in at the very beginning of the routine. But because of how this thing works, you can't tell. So now you can go through so many different ways of having this ball vanish and appear there. And you can have it so that um, anytime you wanna have it so that it, it, you wanna show the gimmick, you can, absolutely. But anytime you wanna have it so that you wanna show the other section, you can do that as well. Like it's really well made. And they go briefly through how to do the, uh, the Mike Gallo, uh, sort of moves with the ball and vase which is you know really nice moves if you don't know and uh, a Jimmy fan goes through his own way of doing that as well which is kind of more of a hang ping chen from the lid which worked very nicely but then on top of all of that and you saw a brief routine that I did earlier on so don't want to dwell on that anymore but as well as that so at the end you've got this really nice moment where you've made this uh uh, this coin, uh, sorry, this uh, this ball appear, but then you've got the ability to immediately make four coins appear or something else that you want to make appear with no moves because the vase has been holding out those four coins or whatever it is that you want to produce from the very beginning. So at the very end of the routine, whatever you want to produce, you can, boom, produce. And th th if I had the four coins in here, I would have produced the four coins. So 
that makes this so much more commercial. And by the way, at the end, you just have to put the coins back in there. The reset is literally a matter of seconds, literally a matter of seconds. You just do that and that and you reset ready to go again. So it is a bit, for me, this is now as commercial and practical as the, uh, as the chocolate. Now, I know that there's people going to be watching this. They're going to go, but Craig, it's a ball and farce. It's like being done to death. And yeah, I totally get that. It's been done to death and it's in every kid's magic book. And that's one of the reasons that I stopped doing sponge balls because every single magic uh, set had it in. But with this, I think you can get away with saying, with, with painting it red and kind of saying, hey, have you ever seen one of those kids' magic sets and you've got that little blue vase with a little red ball inside it? Yeah. Did you know that was based on, on, on a trick that is considered to be required learning when it comes to sleight of hand. I've actually got a version here. Now this is a very old version. It's made out of mahogany, but I want to show you something with this. This is the vase. Now, first of all, you can have a look at that and you can see there's nothing suspicious about it. Have a look at the ball, check it out, make sure it's okay. Now I'm going to show you something with this ball and this vase that's absolutely going to blow your mind. And then you can go into that chop cup style routine where the ball keeps going into the cup and keeps going into the cup. Um, and I, I just think this is great. I think this is absolutely amazing. And anybody who watches this channel for any length of time will know I'm a huge fan of figuring out transitions and how to transition from one effect to the other tricks, uh, the other effects. So rather than just being a series of um, uh, routines that don't mesh together, uh, you're taking people on more of a theatrical experience. Well, what you have here is you have a great way to transition into coin magic. You know, you can do this, you can make the coins appear at the end, and now you can go into a coin routine. Absolutely amazing. This is beautiful. This, the tutorial is very well done. It's like a 35, 40 minute tutorial. Uh, they teach some wonderful moves. Beyond the moves that I did in my performance, there's some other amazing moves that you can learn with this that uh, I will be studying um, and I didn't want to wait until I got them down before showing you this, but there are some incredible moves um, that they go through with this and with small balls and um, yeah, just some, just some great stuff. This is a really nice product. Uh, it fits into a pocket, it packs small, it plays big, uh, it's examinable at the end, it's examinable at the beginning, um, it looks really smart, and, uh, and, and I think that people will love it. I'm going to start performing it in the real world. It's my favorite trick that I'm, I'm uh, reviewing in this review show. I'm giving it 100%. I think this is a massive leap forward. Uh, anybody who's seen my review show on uh, Airship Productions, for example, will know that I'm a big fan of their baseball um, ball and vase, which I am. I think it's great. And there's a lot you can do with it. This is even better. This is even better. It may not have the baseball theme to it, but the amount of stuff built into this is ridiculous. So it's getting 100% from me. It's really great. And uh, yeah, you can get it directly from TCC. Okay, so the final product that we're gonna be looking at today from um, uh, TCC Magic is The Table by TCC and Airship Magic Manufacturing. So what's the table? What is the table? Well, the table, simply put, is TCC's version of David Roth's table. So what is David Roth's table? Well, David Roth's table is um, a beautiful routine. Now, I haven't um, spoken much about the table on this channel, um, but it's one of David Roth's most loved routines uh, that he has performed many, many times. I got the chance to see this live many, 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 many years ago. And the original David Roth routine was that you uh, got a, and I remember trying to make this up back in the day. I remember going to Dole's house shops to try and make this up and failed miserably because the original write-up for this said, what you need to do is you need to get a Dole's table and you need to get yourself some magnetic rubber and you stick the magnetic rubber onto the other side of the table, and that means that you can take a magnetic coin and it'll stick to the table. Um, nice in theory, 
Um, and I'm sure, well, I saw Roth do it and it worked when Roth did it. Unfortunately, I could never seem to make it work for me, ever. Uh, it just didn't work. Uh, and I bought loads of different rubber and loads of different magnetic rubber and loads of different uh, uh, tables and none of it just worked, none of it worked. Uh, and I shelved it for a very, very long time until this came out and this is killer. So um, what they've done is TCC and they've done this in conjunction with airship manufacturing. Uh, and I think it's because the way that they've actually done this, uh, airship have the rights to it. I'm not too sure, I think so. Uh, but what they've done is they've built a slot box into this table. So you can literally have the table examined and you can have four coins and you can literally, or they use three coins, but whatever, three, four, doesn't really matter. Uh, you can put the coins on the table, move the table, and then you can take the coins and one at a time, you can drop them right through the table, which looks amazing. In fact, if you want to know how amazing it looks, you're about to find out. Let's have a look at a performance. Right, cool. I'm going to perform it to Jack. How are you doing, Jack? That's a very small table. It is a very small table. Um, and this is a very big table. There is a size difference. It's not an illusion. That is small. This is big. Father, so. Yes, right. <laughs> I also have three coins. Three coins, a table. Uh, and this is a tablecloth. Because every good table needs a tablecloth. Nice. Uh, we're going to get back to the tablecloth in a bit. Uh, we're going to get back to the table in a bit. First of all, I'm gonna, there's a reason I brought this table along with me. And the reason is there's a classic of magic, which I know you've seen me do before, called the coin through the table. Let's just put this to one side for a second. The idea of the coin through the table is very simple. You put coins through a table. Now, it looks like this. If I took the, uh, the three coins and I, uh, I tell you where it's going to go through, it's going to go right here and I do this and the first coin goes through. I mean, that's pretty impressive, right? Nice. That's the first coin right through the, uh, the solid table. Now, you didn't know what was gonna happen, so I'll do it again. One coin goes under the table. This time we'll use this one. I just do that, and the second coin goes right through the table. Now, that leaves us with one on top and two underneath. <laughs> Last one, two underneath, one on top. Last one goes long distance. You do this, and it goes through, you see, and that's all three. Now, there is a problem with that trick, Jack, and the problem, very, very simply, is you, didn't know what I was doing underneath the table. I could have been, do when I put my hand under the table, I could have been doing anything. That's scary. Well, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I brought this little table along with me. And the reason for the little table is because using the little table, you can see the coins, whether they're on top or underneath, you can see everything at the whole time. So if I'm, if I'm able to do it with the small table, it'll look more impressive, because my hand's not going out of sight. So watch the three coins, watch the table, I'm gonna repeat the trick. I just do this and the first coin goes right through the solid table. You see, that's two there, that's one there, that's the first coin that's gone right through the solid table. I think that's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's pretty Went right through the solid table. Now I'm gonna do it again for you. You didn't ask, but I'm going to. Watch, um, that's number one here. This is the first one. This is number two, that's the second one. Listen to this, watch this. If I do this, that's the second one right through the table, right there. That? That's the second one. Leaves us with one last coin, which is going to magically penetrate right through the table, Jack. I want to watch. We have a table. I'm going to go very, 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 very slowly, Jack. I'm going to make sure I don't cheat. Watch the final coin, Jack. One, two, three, right through the solid table, Jack. That's one, two, three coins through a solid table. Jack, I'm pretty sure you'll agree that that is a miracle. That is pretty good. But when I do this, people turn around to me and say, Craig, because that's my name. They say, Craig, what's the tablecloth for? When I do this, Jack, people turn around to me and they say, Craig, what's the tablecloth for? Do you want me to ask that question? <laughs> Sometimes when I do this, Jack, people turn around to me and they say, Craig, what's the tablecloth for? Craig, what's the tablecloth for? I'm glad we got there in the end. <laughs> well, the tablecloth's very important. It allows you to focus right here. I'm going to, I want you to watch. Watch. Yeah, look, we're going to do something with the small table. We're going to do something with the big table. This hand goes underneath. Watch the small table. Watch the big table. Are you ready? Yeah. Because for the big finish, instead of pushing the coins through the table, Jack, I will take the table and push the table right through the table. That's the oh, table through fuck. the table. And Jack, that is a miracle with a table, a table, some coins, and nothing more than a tablecloth. One's fallen on the floor. Don't worry about that. So that's a performance of the table. Um, now, that's not the Roth original. That's the... Um uh, the TCC version, uh, but the slot box makes it so much better, in my opinion, 
because there's many different ways now that you can load that coin into position. Um, you can do it the original way that Roth talked about, absolutely, and do kind of a, a shuttle pass style thing. Um, but the guys at TCC have come up with a beautiful way of loading it as you just take the coins off the top of the table. So you can bring the table out, have it examined, bring the coins out, have them examined, put them on the table and talk about the coins through the table plot and then take the coins off and one at a time, you're just going to drop them right through the table. And uh, the, the nice thing is they talk about three or four different moves. They teach some exceptional coin moves on here as well. Some beautiful click passes, like some really beautiful click passes that they teach using the muscle pass. Um, but they go through absolutely everything. And what's nice about the tutorial is they go through lots of different options with each phase and lots of different moves in order to accomplish the coins through the table plot, which means that you can, um, uh, you can, you can uh, basically create your own routine. So you can do it however you want to do it. If you want to do it the way they suggest doing it, you can. If you want to substitute the way that the routine works and go with different ideas that they've presented, you can. It's completely up to you. But the whole idea is that you can do a coin through the table with this and it's very, very clean. Now you also get this, uh, which is like a tablecloth for the table. And the point of the tablecloth <coughs> is at the end, you can pick up the table, pick up the tablecloth um, and you can drop the table through the tablecloth. Now, in order to do that, I will tell you right now, you're gonna have to do some lapping, um, which is not commercially viable for most magicians. However, you don't have to do that finale if you don't want to. Uh, if you don't want to do that, don't let the fact that this requires lapping put you off because the, the routine itself with the table is actually really commercial. Yet it's a fairly big table um, and would be ideal for a, a close-up show or a parlor show or something like that. But for sure, you could keep this in your pocket if you wanted to, if you really wanted to make a feature of this. But you can do this anytime, anywhere. There's not really any angle issues to consider. You could even go so far as to have them put their hand out like that. And as long as your audience management was good, you could actually do it in a walk around situation. That would be fine. To do the actual coins through the table, it's super commercial. Super commercial, no angle issues, relatively easy to do, fine. It's this that becomes very unpractical. So just miss that section off. But then you're thinking, well, hang on, I need a finale. Yeah, you probably do need a finale. How about putting the coins through the table and then saying, you know what the problem is? Maybe you think this is a special table. So I'm going to put that away. And instead, I'm going to put the coins through this table. This can't be a special table. You've been sitting at this table for the last couple of hours. I'm going to push this coin through the table. I'm going to get, take the coins and put them through this table one at a time. And then you go into whatever coin through table you want to do. And this becomes a lead in to that coin through table. Now, obviously, in an ideal world, you'll want to use this. You don't have to. As I say, don't let the fact that this is slightly impractical for most real world situations put you off. Because this is a really well made prop. It's very well designed. I love the idea of putting a slot box into this table. That's genius as far as I'm concerned. And um, the table looks legit as well. It looks great. Um, I've always loved David's original version. I've tried to make it for years, wasn't able to do so. I'm definitely going to do this. The tutorial is exceptional. It's one of the best tutorials I've ever seen, despite not having a live performance. Um, I think that this will be very, very well received by audiences. Uh, I think it looks good. I think it will play really well. Um, and it just looks class as well, doesn't it? So I'm going to give this 97%. I think this is great if you're a coin worker out there and you want to do something that's a little bit different to anything else out there, then this is definitely one to go for. Uh, it would be the best trick out this bunch if it wasn't for the fact that that, uh, that you know, ball and vase is just next level. But still, it's very, very good. It's a well-made prop, and I'd highly recommend it. So there you go, guys. That's another review show special in the back. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, you want to see more videos like this, you know what you got to do. Just like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again um, uh, uh, tomorrow with a 5x5. Five I'm five. going to be back again next week with a bunch more videos. And don't forget, you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to join the Netrix, 
go to www.thenetrix.com. That's www.thenetrix.com. You can go and see what all the fuss is about. I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.